RC cars are really fast, which means they crash. Like, a lot. Rather than trying to be more careful, I decided to see if I could upgrade my car to make it avoid hitting obstacles. Kinda like a modern car would. I started off by popping off the lid and taking a look at the components I was working with. Since I want to use the existing radio receiver so I don't have to switch out the controller, I think the easiest way of getting this car to break would be to have an Arduino to switch off the power line for this motor temporarily, which hopefully will get the car to break. So let's see. So after some research, I realized this won't be a good way of breaking the car by just disconnecting the motor cable. And instead, I'm going to have to get a different ESC and have it just connect to an Arduino using a radio and ESC. With the new approach figured out, I focused on the ultrasonic sensors that would detect the obstacles up ahead. After making a quick test circuit with one of the sensors, I was confident that it was working well and I moved on to work on the schematic for its project. So here's the schematic for the controller board for the RC car and here I just have connections for the ultrasonic sensors as well as the radio channels for the FlySky receiver and also some expansion pins in case I want to connect a Raspberry Pi in the future. So time to turn this into a PCB. Once I finished designing the PCB, I sent it over to PCBWay, who also happens to be this video's sponsor. PCBWay is an easy use, trusted, and affordable PCB manufacturer. Using their online tool, you can quickly upload your Gerber files and choose from a variety of materials and finishes for your PCB. Alongside PCB manufacturing, they also offer PCB assembly, CNC machining services, and 3D printing. Check them out in the link below to learn more. A bit later, the PCB arrived at my house, and I was very impressed with how it turned out. The quality was spot on, and the high quality finish made it feel really nice. Since I didn't have the right pin headers for the Arduino Nano on hand, and I was too impatient to order and wait for some to get here, I simply cut some leftover pin headers to size, which worked better than I expected. I then did the same for the other connectors on the board. With the main PCB finished, I took a photo of the car and began designing the 3D printed frame where all the components would sit on. While I was looking on how to approach designing the top platform, I came across an open source project called the Open Robotics Platform, created by the YouTuber Nico Dembartnik. The main idea is to design your project with a special type of grid so that later on you can easily rearrange or add other people's 3D printed components to your robot. Feeling inspired by this concept, I decided to modify the top plate with a grid in order to make it compatible with this platform. After 3D printing all of the parts, I was ready to fully disassemble the car and begin making the modifications. So the servo arm that came with the RC cart, unfortunately it was too big for my servo. So I 3D printed this exactly the same size. Should be enough to fit. Unfortunately, I had to take out more components than I thought. Since the old steering system used a five pin servo instead of a three pin one, that is known to be difficult to wire with an Arduino. Once the steering system was installed, 
I glued in the new ESC and connected it to the motor. Since the old ESC also acted as the radio receiver, I installed a Flysky receiver to make the car compatible with my other controller. Confident that the new ESC and radio were working, I utilized the existing mounting holes on the car to glue in the 3D printed spacers that will hold the top platform. The tops of the spacers also have an M3 heatset insert to securely attach the top plate. I then began assembling the 3D printed housing that I designed for the ultrasonic sensors. I decided to use two sensors in the front instead of one to hopefully better increase the visibility the car had ahead. So the current front sensor mount is just a bit too far out and a bit too high that I'm just going to redesign it and make it uh, closer to the main body of the car. After finishing the new version of the front sensor mount, I began fastening the rest of the components to their 3D printed holders. While I probably won't need the side sensors for detecting objects up ahead, I decided to add them in in case I wanted to do more advanced object detection in the future. I then began fastening the components to the top plate with the help of some M3 nuts and bolts. After finishing all of the wiring, I uploaded some code I made earlier that constantly reads the front sensors and activates the braking mechanism accordingly. If you're interested in learning more, you can find the code in the description below. Before testing, I couldn't help but notice the messy wires on the car, and I quickly organized them with the help of some cable ties to make the build just a bit more neat. As you can see, things didn't really go to plan and the first version of the code was completely unusable despite me thinking I did everything right. After spending a lot of time trying to figure out why the car was jittering, uh, I just connected it up to my computer using the serial connector. And after logging it, I realized that the joystick, when it was centered, so not moving, it was sending like reverse signals. So I had to like smooth that out. And uh, yeah, this took way too long. After countless tests and more modifications to the code, the issues started to get resolved and I was getting closer to finishing this project. As you can see with the testing footage, the car seems to work as I want it to, and it successfully initiated the brake signal once getting too close to the box. Here's some footage with the controller so that you can see I'm not pressing on the brake. However, this car is far from being perfect, and it occasionally completely fails to brake, hitting the object ahead. From my testing, this usually happens if you accelerate very quickly. And while I'm not completely sure what the issue is, it's likely that these cheap ultrasonic sensors are not updating fast enough to detect objects at high speeds. Despite this issue, I'm happy with the modifications I made to my car. Since I now have a customizable RC car platform, I plan on making more modifications in the next part of this series. Using the expansion pins I added on the PCB, 
I could easily add a Raspberry Pi and have it communicate with the Arduino and ESC. This would let me add better sensors to make this car have a more reliable braking mechanism and even better features. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.